Welcome back to the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. The purpose of these episodes is to help entrepreneurs become more successful, avoid tax and other business headaches. Remember to tune in frequently as we will be sharing tips, secrets, and expert recommendations in how you can manage your finances, improve wealth, and grow your business. Please like, share, and subscribe. Here's your host, Liz Soria. Hello, everyone. My welcome, welcome back to another amazing episode. This is Liz Soria, your host of the Tax Advisor and Business Coach Success Podcast. And today I have another really, really special um, episode because this time it's someone that I'm completely honored um, that she's joining us because I know she's going to bring a lot of good tips and and, and going to help us out, especially a topic today is going to be about women and finance because we struggle and we have different issues and different uh, obstacles that we need to come across and we need all the support that we can get. So no further ado, I'm going to introduce Stacy Adams. And Stacy, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I really appreciate you asking me. I love this. Well, thank you so much because I do want to quickly share and, 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 and it's really, I'm going to, you know, the next few minutes is going to be all about you. You're the spotlight oh. here. And that's something you're very used to. I just want to kind of do a brief intro because I know that uh, you have an amazing uh, biography and that one, I wanted to share this with the audience. Um, it's one of them is that you've been a TV anchor uh, for more than 20 years, very successfully. I know, I couldn't possibly look. I've been doing it for 24 years, but I did. 24, oh my goodness, wow. Uh, that is a very long time, <laughs> Stacey. Um, so you're used to being in front of a, a, a camera crew, not, not a little, tiny camera like you're right now so okay, you're yeah, cool I still love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent so one of the things i like doing um when i you know have these kind of conversations uh with my expert guests like yourself is ask you what trigger you to switch from having the steady pay paycheck right and mm -hmm. going almost pretty much on your own because i know that you're currently um, working independently uh, with, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Alliance Financial Group. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and, and so you are independent of them, but something made you really realize that it was time for you to move on yes. and, and start something fresh, uh, because at the same time, there was a purpose behind that. And I think, uh, oh, I might dare to say that it's because you wanted to help other women out there too, and well, in general, the, you know, everyone, but specifically women like ourselves to understand that we need to take care of our finance uh, because somehow we've been known that we're good savers, but, uh, you know, sometimes we also spend a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, isn't that true? So with that, say no further ado, uh, uh, you know, Stacey, tell me a little bit about more your background. What made you click and say, I am ready to okay. get the plug here? That's so cool. I was a television anchor for 24 years all over the country. The last 12 of them here in Fort Myers at Wink TV, the CBS affiliate. And I had done the 10 and the 11 o'clock news. So at the time, it was in 2015, my son was three. And I looked at my husband and I said, you know, I'm ready. I need to do something else. Uh, I think when you do something for 20 years plus, you're really ready for a new challenge. Also, I like to say that I had an expiration date. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Right? We all have a shelf life. We just own the expiration date. And I had such a great run and I was so grateful and I was so happy. I really wanted to have control over how that career ended. So with that said, I took a leap of faith. I jumped out into PR and I absolutely hated it because as someone who was a journalist, facts are facts and I'm very straightforward, which is why I love what I do now. So I was courted to come here at Alliance Financial. We're part of the Guardian and Park Avenue Securities, you know, home. And I love that it was a process, not about a product because so, so backing up, so I did, I was in television for a very long time. Right before I came here, seven years ago, my father died at my house. Oh, sorry. Dear. In the middle of the night, thank you. Um, he had a heart attack. He was 66. He passed away. I say that because my mother That's was a young eight. age. I mean, now in this age. Very young age, correct. That's considered young. And, and I'm sorry, and I know more or less what you went through because I lost my mother also in a very young age, 62. And then I wound up seeing what it did to my mother. Ugh. 
So they, they had canceled the life insurance policy four years before during the recession because it was too expensive. Oh no. Don't My mother's now 72. She still works full time. She's hoping to retire in five years. She will tell anybody she can talk to that that was the one biggest mistake she ever made. People think you don't need life insurance after your, you know, your kids are gone. That's not true. Not true. Because it was a $250,000 policy. Not a lot of money, but that would have afforded her the chance to kind of back up and maybe make some different decisions. She's a little nervous to end working because she doesn't know how long she's gonna live, right? She's in great health, thank goodness, but at 72, she could well live till her 90s. Sure. So that is really a big driving force on why I like to talk to women because I've seen the other side, I know what it's gonna look like. We as women, Liz, we take care of everyone else first. We put our children first, we put our parents first, we put our friends first, we put our husbands first. And who's last? We are, right? That's because right. we think it's selfish to take care of ourselves. And we think it's selfish. How can I put money away for myself when I have a family? Because ultimately, none of us want to be a burden on our families. No. None of us want our children taking care of us. None of us want our children making financial and medical decisions but yet by not taking care of ourselves now and planning today, what we don't want to happen will happen. It's a reality of life. I mean, I mean, and I think that's a great point that you just brought up, uh, you know, Stacy, because like you said, most women we have been, I think it's a, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. We've been brought up as, as a child that we need to take care of others. It's, it will nurture others. It's, it's, it's just a female thing, if you want to call it that way. But the reality is that, um, you know, we need to take care of ourselves too. And not only health wise, uh, but as we're talking about this topic, which is kind of delicate, but it's, it's, a, it's a true thing that women need to realize financially what they can do to secure their future. Because whether you're married in some of the situation like this, your spouse, you know, passes away, or perhaps, you know, you might be dependent of a relative that could happen too. Um, how can they really prepare? And what would you recommend um, that they can start doing if they're not doing it or what else can they add? So that's two in one. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm used to lots of questions. I love it, right? So Liz, it starts with taking care of yourself first. And I'm not saying not taking care of your family. What I'm saying to you is too many women will look at me and I'll say, I don't have any extra money to save. That's not true. Not true. You might have to make some really hard decisions, but I don't care. You have to save something. Ideally, 20% of your gross income. That may sound like a lot. That's what I want my clients to get to. If right. we're starting at three and 4%, we're starting somewhere and then we just have to keep increasing it, right? If you take it out of your checking account and you have it diverted, you don't spend it. That's right. If it goes into your checking account, you will spend it. That's just make the way we are. Make it a habit. That's what I tell you. Make things into a habit. Like you drink your coffee. I don't know. I'm a coffee drinker. <laughs> so me too. for me, I, I just can't wake up without my caffeine. I have to mm -hmm. have my cup of coffee. Well, more than one, by the way. But anyhow, uh, by the time, at this time, I probably had about three. But anyhow, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm a little hyper now. So, But the thing is that it's true. I mean, we need to make things into a habit. So you, your suggestion is if you can do it, let's do it 20% and not come up with any excuses why we cannot. No excuses. You make yourself an automated bill right? You have to divert that money. If you depend on putting that money somewhere else, dollars to notice, you're not going to do it. There's going to always be something that happens, tires, this, that, the kids, no excuses. It's a bill that automatically goes into a different account. Every paycheck, you know, people do it on their 401k. And while I think a 401k is a great tool, there's an over-reliance on that tool. Yes. People very young are putting their money in jail until they're 59 and a half and they have no liquidity. They have nowhere to go the minute they need money. So I say, wait a second. You first need a bucket where you can access money in case of emergencies. So pay yourself first. That's step one, number one. You need to sit down with somebody. This isn't a DIY project. No, I don't not. color my own hair. No, no it might look like it. Um, I don't <laughs> grow my own teeth. I don't do my own taxes. I go see an expert. Because as you know, Liz, money is very emotional. Yes, right? I mean... You need somebody else to kind of put the brakes on things. Would you not agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And not only one thing I want to bring up that I think was a really good point is that 
we need to rely on others also. It's important because sometimes we try to do everything and including our finance, including our taxes, like you say, things like that. But people don't realize that there's others who have been doing it for years. And guess what? They are better than you. Oops. Um, so stick with what you're good and let others help you because this right. is really important. I don't care at this point whether someone who's running a business or someone who's still working as an employee who's listening to, to, to this podcast to realize that it's our future. We're in control. We're not going to blame the government. We're not going to blame others. We need to blame ourselves. So therefore, if we start, it doesn't matter what age you are, because some people maybe for whatever reasons, you know, uh, Stacy, they have not been able to save, but Today could be the first day. Right. And I think the thing that makes me crazy, not to interrupt you, but Liz, it, people say it to me all the time, call me in two months, call me in six weeks, call no. me, you know, next October. Nothing will change in that time, I promise you, except you would have lost more time. That's right. And time is priceless. Your best friend or your worst enemy. <laughs> That's right. Time we cannot buy back. No. So it's really important. One of the things I do want to bring up that way you can define a little bit, uh, especially to the audience, um, since you're an expert in this, life insurance, okay? Let's talk because that's, look what happened to your mother. That's a very good uh, and valid, you know, reality of something that you experiment in your life. And, um, you know, I've seen this with other clients of mine and even friends. And you're right. Sometimes they say, oh, we need to cut that expense. That's not an expense. Let's not call it an expense. Let's call it an investment. Something that's going to be for your future. Right. Um, so and let's talk about the benefits of life insurance, right? Because as a tax advisor, and you know very well, we talk about a lot of strategies. And one of the things I do is, like I said, I don't do so much tax compliance, which is just simple return. I love doing tax planning because I love mm. cutting people's tax bill. And that's where I'm good at. And, and I'm thriving to continue learning because it's so complex. Taxes yeah. is so boring. I mean, that's the truth. Um, that I have to kind of bring a fun part of it. But I love saving people's money. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have to pay Uncle Sam more than what you have to, then, you know, invest it somewhere else. Don't spend it. No, just kidding. Yeah, take your vacation if you have some something left over. But life insurance, we talk about tax deferral. Mm -hmm. And so many people are so obsessed with that, right? With the 401k. There you go. Oh, I don't pay taxes today. Right. But then when I retire, maybe, if hopefully you live that long too, 20, 30 years down the road, I'm going to pay in a lower tax bracket. We don't know that. I can't yeah, guarantee that to my clients. I do not know that. You might be in a higher bracket by all means. It could happen. So, Define a little bit that terminology in your terms, that way the audience can understand, please. So first of all, I think everyone should have life insurance and not the kind you borrow from your employer. Because, well, everyone says I have it through my work and I said, that's borrowed. You don't own anything. Okay, the minute I've seen it so many times, Liz, people come to me now, they're 60. And they said, well, we had life insurance all the time when we worked. Yeah, but now you don't and you have a spouse. And, and your income does not get cut in half. Your expenses don't get cut in half when someone leaves you. Yeah. So you should always own some life insurance. If I told anybody anything, I would say own some of your protection. Take it from the business, of course, because it's cheap. That's gravy, but own it. And own it as soon as possible. Yeah. Now, life insurance done correctly, not just in a silo. See, I do insurance and investments. Okay. And they work magically together. What? One is great, one is great, but together they work well because of what we just discussed, being tax-free. When you own whole life permanent insurance, That's right. that builds tax-free for you. That's so right. when you have 401k, that's a tax-deferred bucket. You don't get away without paying taxes on that. You just pay it on the back end. Everyone thinks it's going to be tax-free. You know, they look at, let's say, they have $500,000 in that 401k. That's not all their money. No, and they not. don't think about that. They're planning on that 500000 That's not all their money. No, it's not. So life insurance used properly creates, you know, a tax-free bucket as well as leverage. You know, it, there's so many ways you can use um, whole life insurance. When you sit with an expert, it becomes part of your plan. It's not just a product. That's the difference. People are selling it to you as a product and then they think you can throw it away. If you work with a professional like myself, you sit down and we'll show you how it works together. And the beauty is there's a, there's a strong place for it in your portfolio. Consider it your bond portion of your portfolio. 
And also, I think something that is important to bring up is that even if you have an emergency, I believe there's some plans on life insurance. And let's bring that up because people might be thinking, oh, well, well, think about this, a 401k, you know, you can roll it over and things like that, right? And you're always right. trying to do that. But again, I, I, and, and it's good that we, we kind of share in our knowledge here because from the tax, you know, aspect, People realize, like I said, tax defer is great. Yeah, it's reducing your, you know, your paycheck and you're taking a little bit more at home and that's phenomenal. But you mm -hmm. have to look at the long term. So that means that if you're going to be paying a bunch of taxes at the end, again, you cannot count with that figure that you think in your mind that you're mm -hmm. going to have because it's not going to happen. Um, tax-free, I love the word tax-free and that's Me? why yeah. I am, I am very, very, <laughs> profound to offering services and, and, and strategies to my clients through tax free including the Roth IRA. Right. The solo for you know the solo for one K also Roth. So mm -hmm. we can do all these kind of things because I really think that the last thing you want to worry about folks is taxes <laughs> when you're retiring because enough you're gonna deal. So go a little bit about the options that if they have in case if they can take a loan, what kind of options they right. have, they have an emergency. Well, First of all, people always say it's so expensive. Remember, it's a saving, it can be used as a savings component. There's so much more to life insurance than just the death benefit. Yes, it triggers a death benefit if someone passes, but right. there's so much more to it. Um, it builds cash value. I'm with Guardian, so I'm a mutual company, meaning you have a policy, I have a policy, we own the company. There's no shareholders above us. That's nice. a big deal. Yes, it is. Um, we participate in the dividends of that company. Guardian's a company that's been around for over 160 years, always paid a dividend. Those are strong, those are things you need to look for in a company. So when you're putting money into this, and yes, it costs money, but look at it as like a tax savings vehicle, as well as a death benefit. There's more, you can leverage it, it's creditor protected. There's so much that goes into the beauty of having a policy than just the death benefit. I think when you sit with someone who understands how to utilize that product, within we almost like consider it like a nucleus right if you have a whole life policy it's the nucleus that makes all of your other assets better and stronger and like you said you it builds the cash value so let's say you hit a hard time and you're six years seven years into it and you say wow stacy i you know we need money for a down payment or a car or whatever that see. money is yours That's it right. doesn't trigger a tax problem you call up and you say i need x amount of dollars from that and it's yours and there's no problem with it. No penalties? No which penalties. Is extremely high and people don't realize that you're looking at 10 and 15% and, and, and of penalties, you know, every time you touch any type of retirement because the reason why they've done this is because they don't want you to touch your money in a retirement right. plan. They just don't. That's why there's penalties. And life insurance, like you say, if you truly have an emergency, something comes up, you can touch your, your, your principal. The money that you put there, you can touch it. It's not an right. issue. So, you know, that's, that's a very big freedom. And not only that, um, explain a little bit how or what options they have into um, the investment that they do with their funds. I think that's important. That way they understand a little bit. What can they do with the funds inside the life insurance? Oh, our life insurance, is not, we don't do any. It's not, it's not a universal. It's a, whole, a personal whole life policy is the ones that I like. I don't personally like. I can sell you those. I don't really like those. I like the fact that you're going to have a pure whole life policy. You know, I think your insurance should be one thing and your investment should be another. I think that's how you make them stronger. I don't want them intertwined in one product. That's just me. Right. I mean, that's excellent. And now, what what uh, what other suggestions do you do? Um, uh, the earlier, obviously, the better it is. How much um, someone that now maybe they're in, in their mid age, as we call it, right now in this day's mid age means forties. <laughs> okay, so so I'm mid aged. I'm I'm that person. Go ahead. Me <laughs> too. Actually, I'm in my thirties. So oh, good for you. <laughs> All right. So. What are we looking at? Because I think factors as if you're you're smoker that that affects right. So those kind of things. What what would be the average? I mean, that way people understand how much you know they're, they're investing in a monthly. There's basis. no way to know, Liz. But here's what I would say to you. One of the things I love doing for women is baking their long-term care into their policy. So Guardian has a rider, right? Long-term care. We don't know what it's going to look like, right? I mean. 
I might need a nurse come sit, you know, be with me. I might need to go to a facility. I don't know what that's going to cost. So the only way to do this is to mitigate that by having something that's going to offset that cost for you. So by having a permanent policy, we have a rider that's a long-term care rider. It stays with you forever, right? You pay your premiums. Let's say you never need the long-term care. Fine. But if you do, what happens? Can you explain? The Reduces the death benefit dollar for dollar in my policy, in a guardian policy. But basically, you're just accessing the money while you need it, right? I say a, a whole life policy, someone's getting paid, whether you use the cash, whether you use the death benefit, whether you use the long-term care, there's so much that goes into it. It's like a wonder product. I mean, I really mean that. I, you know, here, I'm going to tell you a quick funny story. I don't know if it's really funny because it makes me look kind of not that smart. Um, years ago, well, years ago, before I was in, before I was in this industry, my mom, I, I dealt with her life insurance. I've always had life insurance. I had term insurance. I still have term insurance. I'm a firm believer. You need both. Yeah, whole life is expensive. If I could have more whole life, the more I can get, the more I want. But I have to have term because I have a young child and I have a husband. So I have both. And there's nothing wrong with having both. But before I had the whole life, years ago, my mom's insurance woman kept trying to talk to me. Now, I was a news, you know, I'm a journalist. I always think someone wants something. So I'm guilty till proven innocent was my motto, just FYI. So I was a terrible client because I didn't want to listen to her. I didn't listen to a word she said. She kept trying to explain it to me and I didn't listen. And now, knowing what I know, I look back and I tell my clients, I get it. But I was unwilling to even hear the conversation. I wish I would have done it then. But looking back, I didn't. So I always say, don't make that mistake. At least hear it because you don't know what you're saying no to. Don't always look at it like a cost. I'm going to show you how you can pay for it. That's right. You know, it's a saving. It's putting money from one pocket to the other pocket, creating a savings with a lot of benefits. So you really have to look at it is what you're going to do for your future. It can't always be everything for today, which is that whole tax deferred, you know, we're going to defer it all to the back end. Why? And, and, it, and it's a nightmare. And you constantly hear that. And, and that's, and, and unfortunately, here's the thing. I think there's a lot of confusion. And the reason behind that, because everybody, all they hear in the media, all they read in their magazines, or when they even, you know, go on the radio, whatever it is, TV, all it is about tax deferred, tax deferred, tax deferred. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't be right. Because I tell people, one of the things I always tell them, if you have an employer and they're matching money, and you're for 1K, you want to go for it. You free money, of course. Yes. You never want to miss because that's free money. Right. That's free money that your employer is giving you. Well, depending on what the vesting, as they call it, because that's another issue that I've seen a lot of 401Ks. People don't realize that, mm -hmm. right? If you're not vested, they have a certain time. And if you're not vested mm -hmm. five years or seven years, now they, every time it's even more and more. Yeah. And people sometimes have come out of their company saying, oh, I've got my 401K and i got a big check coming mm -hmm. to me. Or I'm going to be able to roll over the money. And then they discover they have half the money <laughs> because mm -hmm. all along, Maybe they were not vested enough into their employer, or perhaps they didn't make enough sufficient years right. working in the company to take their portion of the employer. So be right. careful out there because a lot of people don't know that. So when you look into 401ks, make sure it says vested, that it says how many years you have to be in the company because otherwise they can keep the money that supposedly they were, they were but that's, be that's the other that's the other reason I say sit down with a professional you know I look over I look at all the things that I don't get paid for right I need to make sure they have a will because you don't want to go into the state I need to make sure that they have liability coverage because they could get sued and all their assets become you know fair game I want to make sure that their what they have at their employer is what they think they have Right? Because Absolutely. just like you said, or sometimes they have someone come in and do their employee benefits. They put stuff in front of you and they say sign and you don't even know what you signed up for. And then you walk away and then maybe you need that disability product. But I, 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 look, you something I, and you don't have it. I'm very sincere to tell you, and I say this to in front of to every single client and like it is right now, there's going to be a replay. Um, I want to do what's best for my client. I need to follow as uh, I do have a very ethic code with internal revenue services uh, to always give the best advice based on their codes. And that's exactly what I do. And yes, it is legal. A lot of the loopholes, people might dislike them. Some people might disagree with them, but then there, as long as you have the right 
experts to mm -hmm. help you, then you can exceed to have a better future. And here's one thing that you brought up and I want to kind of retouch is it's protected. Your life insurer is protected from your vendors. That's very important for people to know that. Like your home, we live in the state of Florida, you and I, so uh, Homestead, as some mm -hmm. people know, is a protection that we have against our vendors. Why? Because God forbid something ever happens to you, and unfortunately can't happen, um, we are protected at least by certain things that we do investments in our life. And that's one thing that I think is really important for, for, for the folks to, to know that. So it is right. their retirement, their home, their life insurance. Those things are protected that creditors can't take. But that means that leaves a lot of low hanging fruit that they could, yeah. if not protected properly. That is so true. That is so true. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely, um, any other tips that you can offer uh, our, our women uh, there? I, know, I would just say that, that first of insurance, all, life insurance, anything. Life insurance, make sure you understand what you're invested in. Stop waiting. Stop waiting, ladies. Come on. You know, love your families enough to take the time to take care of yourself for the future. Okay? It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. Just make sure you do it. Um, those are my big call to actions. I mean, start today, start small if you have to. We can build on that. Small buckets become big buckets, right? The big bucket doesn't fall from the sky like we'd like to think. It would be nice. Love yeah, that. it would be. <laughs> not a reality, right? Reality is now. Right. And first, when it comes to retirement, like you said, finding yourself in a situation that now you don't have enough money to even mm -hmm. survive because we cannot, and this is something I emphasize a lot to women too, we cannot depend on Social Security. No. It's really, really, really bad. Um, so you need to create, remember, Social Security was then really uh, based on a temporary, uh, you know, uh, resolution for, 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 you know, for people to retire. But you can't, that's not should be your main, you know, retirement fund. You need to look at things that you're doing now, that way you have sufficient to live, like you say, a nice life for you for your future. You don't want to be counting pennies and figuring right. out how you're going to pay or where you have to work for many more years. I mean, goodness. I mean, folks, I mean, you work very hard. Uh, you deserve to have, uh, you know, a peaceful and enjoyable, you know, retirement. And I, it, it breaks my heart when I see, you know, folks in the older age and with all due respect to, to anyone over the age of 65, you know, in 70s, they're still working because they just cannot do ends meet. It breaks my heart. Right. Well, and people don't even realize, Liz, obviously your Medicare comes out of that. You know, they think they're going to get X amount of dollars from Social Security. It's not a lot of money. Then your Medicare is coming out of that. There's just so many things that that's why I say sit with somebody. You, you don't want to figure this out the wrong way. That is so true. So once again, how can the audience reach you? Your oh, phone, I would, contact, phone number, anything, please? Yes, I would love. So here, I'm here in the Fort Myers area, but I do a lot of WebExes. So please, you can reach me either by my phone, 239-229-3382, or email me at s adams like Stacey Adams, at afgfl.com. And I'm happy to talk to anybody, you know, let's get started. Um, you know, my, I want my clients to win at the end of the day when you win, I win. I mean, that's such a great feeling. So that's why I want to work with women because the reality is we've got to help each other. And I do. And I, and, and I always try to do my best to, you know, give this kind of, uh, you know, experts like yourself because they really need as much help as possible. And like I said, like you said at the beginning, we're just concentrating, doing other things for others. And sometimes we forget about ourselves. And right. it's important because things can happen. And like you said, you could depend on your spouse and something happens to him. And then what? You don't want to be in that situation. You want to look back and say, oh, I made that decision a few years ago. Here's my right. life insurance. No one's getting rich from life insurance. Let me explain that to you. Everyone thinks they're going to leave their spouse with a ton of money. That's not what it is, and that's not how it's built. <laughs> it's just, I mean, really, everyone thinks I'm going to leave my spouse, and they're going to be wealthier than ever before. That is not the case. You can, and, and FYI, I just want to say one thing. Everyone believes because they woke up today, they can get any insurance they want. And unfortunately, it breaks my heart when I sit down with somebody, and I cannot get them insured. Wow. Because it has to do with health. Because health and age. Yeah. Health and age. So the sooner the better, you know, run, don't walk, and talk to somebody and, and ha own some of your own protection. Don't be a victim of your company. Yeah.
That's a very, very good point. I'm glad that you brought that up again because it is a very, very important reminder. So again, folks, please, anyone listening, especially women, we're doing this especially for all of you. Uh, be smart. I know you're smart. I have no doubt. But sometimes we need to understand that we need to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And really, it's important that we save that money, put it into that life insurance and other venues that it can help you and to have a better you know, future for your retirement. Like I said, you don't want to be working into that. That's not what retirement is. It's for you to enjoy, have vacation, do the things that you always wanted to do, right? It's, yes. it's been such a pleasure. To oh, thank you. you. And I hope to, that you join us again, maybe for something else. And you can- I would love to. Absolutely, it really is. Because again, part of my podcast is to help people out there to really improve the bottom line, uh, whether it is you know, through the business or through their own personal lives. And I do appreciate and value your time. So thank you once again for being with us in this show. Thank and you. hopefully we're gonna stay connected. So thank you, thank you so much, Stacey. And thank you for all my folks out there that listen and uh, they care enough to, uh, for my audience to keep growing. And uh, I'm here to bring as much value as possible. And if you have any questions for Stacey, uh, for those who are on my YouTube channels, uh, guess what? Just post them on the comments, and I'm sure I can forward it to Stacey. You should be happy Absolutely. to answer them. And uh, you do, by the way, before we end, uh, wrap up the episode, do um, you do any consultations? You do, right? They can Always, always, them. always. And just FYI, I don't charge to meet with my clients. There you go. So, you know, so, I, so I always say there's no reason you shouldn't be sitting down with somebody or doing a video conference with them. We'll do it on the phone. There's multiple ways that we can reach you. Even if you're not here in my area, I'd be happy to help you. I just want to see some women start taking action today. Thank you so much, Stacey. And again, complimentary consultation. So no oh. excuse, ladies. Okay, go out there and contact uh, uh, Stacey. I'm sure she's going to be able to help you. And thank you once again, folks. And I will see you in the next episode and a lot of success to each of you. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye.